Danger at Diablo, Chapter 10, The Lawn Party. The Shanley Garden, with its precious green lawn that cost John Shanley so much to maintain, was in gala dress. From one tall tree to the next, the servants had strung Japanese paper lanterns, each with a candle inside that would be lighted when the sun had gone down. Crepe paper and bunting festooned the wide, shady porch, and more Japanese lanterns swung there. The ornate iron gates stood wide to receive the awed Diablo citizens who had already started arriving in carriages, buckboards, ranch wagons, and on horseback. Under the trees, long pine tables were being spread with checkered homespun tablecloths, and there was a procession of kitchen help bringing out the great round silver platters of dainty sandwiches and tall frosted layer cakes, decorated with pink and white rosebuds and spun sugar curly cues. And for the men folks, there were huge apple pies, brown crusted and steaming from the oven. But the most impressive sight to greet the eyes of the guest was the huge silver punch bowl filled with fruited lemonade and set in a washtub crammed to the brim with ice. Real ice. Shanley had sent all the way to Bonanza City for that ice, 20 miles away. Half of it had melted on the road, but there was still enough left to cool the lemonade, freeze the ice cream, and furnish the Diablo citizens with a topic of conversation for months to come. Edith still lingered in her room, adding final touches to her toilette. She smiled approvingly at herself in the long mirror. Her wide-skirted party dress was as becoming as she had hoped, but she was a little pale. She remedied that by pinching her cheeks till they turned pink. The added color was very pretty, she decided. But when she got to Paris, she would buy some of that naughty stuff called rouge that the heroines in all the paperback novels seemed to use. Hurry, Edith, people are getting here. Her father stood frowning in the doorway. I want you to be there when the Oakleys and McTavish arrive. I will, Papa dear, she drawled, pirouetting languidly in front of the mirror. I can hardly wait to see that Oakley girl in her idea of a party dress. I hope I can keep from giggling. See that you do, Shanley reminded her sharply. Save your giggles till after I have McTavish's signature on a deed to that ranch of his. Edith ran to the window. There was a commotion down on the lawn. Someone was being greeted loudly, and it even sounded like a cheer or two. She stared down through the heavy lace curtains. Sheriff Luke had pulled in through the tall iron gates in his old squeaking-wheeled ranch wagon. He was driving, and Annie and Tag sat beside him. The cheers were evidently for her. She was wearing a long, old-fashioned cape with a hood, and Edith couldn't make out what her dress was like. She saw several of the men bring their ladies forward to meet the sheriff's niece as Luke helped his family down from the wagon. A moment later, Annie was out of sight in the crowd. Edith's face was twisted in a sarcastic smile as she turned abruptly from the window to her father. "'Your guest of honor has arrived,' she said. "'Let's go down and join the worshippers.' She couldn't help a final dig at her father. "'In spite of your campaign, Papa dear, McTavish seems to have quite a few friends in Diablo.' Shanley nodded. Not as many as he used to have. Just do your part with the girl and I'll take care of McTavish. Annie still wore the long cloak over her dress as Edith drew her over to kiss her on the cheek. I'm so happy you came, she exclaimed, and then she whispered, I was afraid my silly message about wearing a white dress might have upset you if you didn't happen to have one. I'm sure you'll be adorable in anything you've worn. Annie smiled and unfastened her long wrap. I was sort of worried for a few minutes, she admitted frankly, but Uncle Luke found this for me. She threw off the cloak and revealed the softly gleaming wedding satin. Edith's gasp of surprise was echoed by the admiring murmurs of the guests around them. Edith's own gown was pretty, but Annie's had yards more material and a train. She could have choked the sheriff's niece with her bare hands. Instead, she had to smile and gurgle, How charming! And the latest style, too! Annie grinned. It's not so late, I'm afraid. It was my mother's wedding gown, and it's been in her trunk at the ranch for nearly 20 years, Uncle Luke says. I remember the wedding. It was Jake Carney who owned the general store in Diablo. Your pa was in his cavalry uniform, sword and all. We chivalried him. Annie looked startled and turned to Uncle Luke for an explanation. He was laughing. That's right, Jake, we sure did. He told Annie, It's an old custom hereabouts. Don't do it much anymore. Serenaded the newlyweds and played tricks on them. Called it chivalrying. He chuckled. Edith smiled coldly. We'll have to hear more about the pioneer customs later, she said lightly. Right now, I believe the refreshments are ready. She slipped her silk-mittened hand through the sheriff's arm and led the way toward the tables. 
Andy glanced around for Tag, but he had disappeared into the kitchen, where he was valiantly at work turning the handle of the ice cream freezer. It was a hard job, but every small boy tried to get it, because whoever did it afterward got to lick the paddles, all encrusted with thick, rich, gooey cream. John Shanley offered Annie his arm and strolled slowly with her toward the buzzing crowd around the tables. This was the opportunity he had been waiting for. "'I've been wondering how I could best thank you for saving my girl's life in the runaway,' he began. "'Please,' Annie spoke quickly. "'Forget it. Tag made the horses run away with his nonsense, and it's thanks enough if you forgive him for it.' "'We already have, my dear. All boys are full of high spirits.' "'It's mighty nice of you and Edith to feel that way. Tag will be happy to hear it.' "'I hope you will be happy when I tell you what Edith and I want to do to show our gratitude.' They were on the fringe of the chattering guests now, and Shanley drew Annie toward her uncle as he called, "'Luke, come here, will you?' Sheriff Luke sauntered over with a glass of lemonade in one hand and a large sandwich in the other. "'What's she been doing now?' he joked. "'Breaking the law?' "'Luke,' Shanley's voice was impressive. "'What would you say to sending this girl of yours to the best finishing school in the East, the one Edith goes to?' Luke and Annie were equally surprised. "'It's Edith's own idea.' Shanley continued, and she's dead set on it since Annie saved her life the other day. She wants Annie to have all the best that there is. Luke shook his head slowly. It's what I'd like for her, John, but I can't swing it. I'm not a rich man like you. You misunderstand, old friend. John Shanley put his arm over the tall sheriff's shoulders. I'll take care of all the expenses. It's the only way Edith and I could think up to show how grateful we are to Annie. Can't let you do it. McTavish was firm. "'Of course not,' Annie smiled. "'But it was sweet of Edith to think of it just the same.' "'Now wait,' Shanley held them both. "'I won't let you say no. "'The amount of money it'll take is only about the price I get for one small lot. "'And anyhow, it's just lying in the bank doing nobody any good.' "'The sheriff still shook his head. "'Shanley turned to Annie. "'Annie, make this old moss back listen to reason. "'Tell him how selfish she is keeping you cooped up on a ranch away out here "'instead of having fun like other girls your age.' "'But I like the ranch, Mr. Shanley.' "'She met her uncle's questioning look with a reassuring nod. "'I hate to seem ungrateful, but I don't want to go away from here. "'This is home, and Tag and I are happy on the ranch.' "'Edith,' Shanley beckoned to his daughter. "'These stubborn people won't listen to our little plan. "'See if you can change their minds.' "'Please, pretty please.' "'Edith used her best smile as she looked appealingly at the sheriff. "'Let Annie come to school with me. "'We'll have so much fun together.' She turned to Annie. I know you don't want to stay here on a hard little old ranch when you could visit Paris. Paris? Annie turned to Shanley, surprised. Of course, Edith bubbled on. Didn't Papa tell you that he wants to send the both of us to Paris during winter vacation? I didn't get to it, Shanley laughed, but I was just about to. He was glad Edith had thought that one up. Annie's eyes were sparkling with interest. Maybe that was the bait they needed. You will come, won't you? "'Edith babbled, clutching Annie's arm and smiling appealingly into her eyes. "'Some of the girls are going, too. "'You'll just love Senator Brown's daughter and the governor's niece.' "'Annie shook her head. "'I'm afraid not,' she said soberly. "'I belong here. "'I don't really. I didn't really know it till I put on this dress of mother's. "'It's pretty and all, but I don't feel comfortable dressed up. "'I guess I was cut out for plain ranch life.' "'Edith pouted and stomped her foot. "'Oh!' Dear, she wailed, I was counting on showing you off to the girls. To herself, she thought, Ugh, I can imagine. But she kept a bright smile going. If I had the money right now, Sheriff Luke told them, I'd make Annie go along back to school with you, Miss Edith. She's never had time to take it easy and have fun like most other girls, but it's not our habit to let others foot our bills on any excuse. Uncle's right, Annie smiled. Well, Edith dimpled at them. There's still time to change your minds. I'll keep on hoping till the day before I have to leave for school. She gathered up her long skirts with one hand, threw the sheriff and Annie a kiss with the other, and skipped back to her other guests. Shanley tried to keep smiling pleasantly. We'll hold it open. I won't take no for an answer yet. When he had followed Edith, Annie turned to her uncle and was surprised to see him looking glum. Why, what's bothering you, Uncle Luke? I was just wondering if I should have sold that old run-down ranch of ours to Shanley long ago when he offered to buy it. I reckon it isn't a place for a growing-up girl at that. If I'd sold it, I'd have the money to give you the things other girls have. Uncle Luke! 
Annie's eyes flashed, and she looked almost angry. I meant what I said to them about the ranch being where I want to stay. I love it, and I don't want to go away to school or Paris or any other place. I want to be here where I have a real home, the sort of home that Dad and Mother used to plan for. You believe me, don't you, Uncle Luke? I think I do, honey. The big man nodded slowly, and I'm right glad to hear it. It reminds me of something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and by jing, I'm going to tend to it the next time Judge Barry holds court at Bonanza City. He wouldn't say what it was, but his eyes twinkled, and he seemed highly pleased at his decision. Inside the big house, the strains of a fiddle and a guitar announced that dancing was underway. A caller bellowed, Grab your ladies for a Virginia reel! and the guests started crowding in. The big entrance hall had been cleared so the dancers would have plenty of room, and they were soon stamping out the figures of the reel, the square dances, and the Paul Jones with noise and enthusiasm. Those who didn't care to dance kept busy with gossip and chatter around the refreshment tables inside and out, and when the big lemonade bowl was empty, it was quickly refilled, and the house rang with music and laughter. It was a most successful party. All evening, Annie had to tell about her experiences along the Overland Trail. Tag, puffed with too much ice cream, shone in her reflected glory and there and was there to remind her of incidents she forgot to mention. Altogether, it was Annie's party, and Edith Shanley hated every minute of it, but she was the one who urged her to tell more. "'Tell us about that awful horse thief,' she begged, and Annie couldn't refuse. "'It's too bad he got away,' Edith shuddered delicately. "'I'm scared to drive even half a mile from home now.' "'I doubt if you're in any danger, my dear.' Shanley laughed. That fellow will steer clear of the Diablo lady since he's had a taste of Annie's sharpshooting. You really ought to make Annie a deputy instead of that young man who was so careless. Edith's voice was raised so that it would reach most of the guests. Several of them drifted over to hear what was going on. Shanley answered loudly for their benefit. You don't know what you're talking about, Edith, he said sharply. He's a very reliable young man. He was tricked. He saw some frowns on the faces of the listeners. There's too much loose talk going on against our lawmen. I, for one, am behind both Sheriff Luke here and his deputy, a hundred percent. He laid a hand on Luke's shoulder as he spoke. There were murmurs of approval and only a few growls of disagreement. Sheriff Luke beamed at this loyal friend of his and thought how lucky he was to have him. Edith giggled an apology and danced away, but they had stirred up doubts, she and her father, just as they had intended to do. And Shanley had managed to plant in everyone's mind the conviction that he was the sheriff's very good friend. It was nearly midnight before the final lingering guest had driven noisily off in the last of the ranch wagons. Edith followed her father into the big reception hall. "'Well, that's over,' she said crossly. "'We tried. Now what do we do?' Now, he answered grimly, I stop experimenting and go to work on them. How long do I have to stay around Diablo and be bored to death by its stupid villagers, she demanded. Till I don't need you any longer, he snapped, and watch yourself with Annie. I caught you scowling at her a couple of times. A lot depends on convincing her that we are very fond of her. Very fond. He stopped at the foot of the stairs. And don't forget it. He stalked up to his room, and a few minutes later she was amazed to see him come down again riding, wearing a riding outfit. I'll be gone several hours, he told her. In the middle of the night? My business won't wait. My dear friend the sheriff informed me tonight that he intends to deed his ranch over to Annie as soon as Circuit Judge Barry gets to Bonanza City for his regular session, and that may be any day now. To Annie? Then you'll never have a chance of getting it. The dear thing's sentimental about her new home. Maybe so, he smiled thinly, but it isn't in her name yet. That's the end of chapter 10. Come back next time to find out what happens.